Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. I'm going to do a little watercolor today and I'm going to have a natter and I just wanted to make this fairly impromptu so I'm going to do a little area of uh, the north Norfolk coast called Brancaster and uh, I'm just going to do a little cottage there, a little bit of boat and uh, estuary uh, and while I do that I'm just going to have a natter and just yeah just see where it goes. So enjoy, I'm gonna crack on with it and it's gonna be real time, so we'll see what happens. All right, for this, I'm just gonna put a fairly high horizon in. Now, first off, I wanna plot roughly where I want this building and it's gonna be quite high in the picture plane, probably somewhere, I'm gonna suggest it about there, I think, just to try and get the angles of the roof correct and coming down like so. Don't want it too massive but I want it to be quite uh, a dominant feature in the whole painting. And it's got a straight section of building through there, like so. And then let that go all the way down through there. And of course, we've got the ground that goes in front of it. Now there are one, uh, there's several sort of building doors and one thing windows and another window there and the third one there. So I think actually this is a little bit too long. Just looking at it, probably wants to come in about there. So I'm gonna take some away. I can always extend it, but I think that's probably closer to it, something of that nature, maybe that bringing it to there. Something like that, okay? <laughs> I say something like that. Anyway, right, so what am I gonna be chatting about? Well, not too much. We've got so much in our lives uh, right now, haven't we, that uh, is um, completely dominating the way we live around the world. And, you know, depends on, on your outlook, I suppose, but um, we all think of ourselves of having various hardships. And, of course, we are to a point where all our lives is, have changed. But... Um, You've got to spare a thought also for all those people in the front line that are helping all of us who are sick and become sick because of this awful virus that's out there. Um, anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so I just sort of wanted to touch upon that and one or two other things that are going on for me. Because one of the areas that I wanted to discuss was what am I doing whilst I am... Um, sort of shut away in my home uh, and my studio and what's happening with Paul Apps Fine Art, as it were, on an ongoing situation. I'm just sketching through. There's a big reed bed through here. Wonderful to see. We don't see too much of that down my neck of the woods, but it's lovely to see this big reed bed. And I'm going to digress. I'm sorry. I'm going to digress. And I will digress immediately because um, if you start hearing strange noises, um, my neighbours are all at home and they, of course, are carrying on their lives as best they can with this new regime, new way of living uh, imposed upon us by this, as I say, this awful disease. And um, so they are doing their little bits and pieces around their homes. So you're going to hear that. And unfortunately... There's nothing that I can do. And indeed, I've talked to or heard from several other artists, content creators uh, in different places that are all having a very similar uh, issue when it comes to recording information for their channels and for YouTube and whatever it might be for. And there's a little boat in there, a little speed boat type thing, the cabin on the front. Yes, as I say, and um, so we're all in that same sort of situation where we have to do the best we can so that you can still enjoy um, the paintings that we create for you to learn from, uh, in case of artists, that is, uh, onto YouTube. I'll change that, make sure that looks about right. That's not so bad. And anyway, um, so I want to talk about that. And I also want to sort of say a big, big, massive um, sort of mark of respect. Not thanks, because our thanks go out to each and every one of them, I'm sure. But all the frontline staff, 
And I don't just mean all the shoppers, uh, shop, all the shop assistants and the medical staff and just everybody who's uh, in having to go to work and do all their various things that they've got to do to make sure that our lives are um, taken care of in the, in the best possible way and keeping a check on uh, everything that we are doing, making sure we are safe, making sure that medicines uh, are on hand for us and all these different things. But I don't just, as I say, I didn't just mean to talk about the medical staff because they are doing an amazing job out there. But then you've got all the police, the army, but coming all the way back down to all the assistants in shops. You know, we go and line up and I saw people the other day sort of having a little moan about this, not getting in to do that. And, you know, mark a respect for all these ladies and, that, and gentlemen behind the tills that are having to face us with our snivels and um, moans and stuff whilst that we go and get our uh, shopping and start, you know, hear people moaning, oh, there's none of this, there's none of that yet. Well, you know, it's the way it goes. Just a few trees. Just wanted to build this little area up here. Nice big chimney pot on the end of this building. So let's just change the way that looks. Like so. And down and another one at the end or in, other end of the building. So anyway, I... Um, put that through there. Change that. Take that away. So I just wanted to sort of say a big, big thing. Uh, mark of respect to all these people. Um, I expect the last thing that any of them want to be doing is um, stuck at the end of a checkout, serving people, especially the ones who are whinging. Um, and um, yeah. Anyway, so what am I doing? Well, I'm like everybody else stuck at home my gallery is closed and my teaching my physical teaching my classes has ceased to be and is no longer um well certainly no longer for the foreseeable future that's for sure just one or two bushes away in the background there and this big reed bed so i could i didn't want to just do nothing i, I wanted to be very very active so I am doing a, a lot more of this type of thing for you guys over the coming weeks. There will be an awful lot more video uh, coming out from me. Just putting a nice sway of grass bank through here. And this is the tidal estuary. And there's just a few puddles on one of the two things. Nice big shadow that's going to come out from under here. Which I'm just going to suggest there. Yeah, um, anyway. I didn't want to not do anything. I'm actually looking into um, streaming video. I don't know anything about it. And I've got to say, I looked at a lot of um, YouTube videos that teach or purport to show you how to do streaming, um, what you need, what you've got to do to get it right and up and working. I thought I'd followed these pretty much to the letter. Put a couple of marks in here, a couple of darts. There's another building through there. I'm just going to suggest another roof or two there. Can't quite see what's going on with these, but they're going to be fairly generic. So I learned what I could. I'm just taking some of this graphite away a little bit. Not too much. I don't normally do this. I'll just do a little bit here. And I thought I got it pretty much sorted out with a view to start streaming got all the technical stuff in place and um, immediately well I say immediately pretty soon after I started the whole thing went wrong and um, I made all sorts of errors I don't know quite what I did to be honest with you uh, but it left me in such a situation that I was pretty much unsure whether I actually wanted to do any more um, because I felt a little bit vulnerable. I thought I'd caused myself a couple of sort of what they call content strikes from 
um, YouTube itself and it worried me. I actually didn't, but I thought I had. And it sort of put me into a situation where I just did not want to uh, have another go at it. Now I've got to overcome that because actually at this time, I actually haven't had another go at it. And um, it's for good reason, you know, because I'm still trying to learn and still trying to work out um, the rights and wrongs of what I did. And I've asked a lot of people, and a lot of friends have come to my rescue and tried to help me um, understand where the issue lie and what I've done wrong because obviously it's tech and the only thing about tech is the human interface. We always do something a little bit not quite right so that's what happened and um, I've got to get to the bottom of that. So the, the um, streaming aspect has gone on hold just a little bit. I will get back to it. I have and I am, so not I have, I really am planning on doing it and um, making something of it. So, yeah, I suppose it's a case of watching this space, really, and seeing how it develops. But um, it will develop. Uh, I sort of made a bit of a promise to some of my patron, uh, or my patrons, on my patron channel. Um, so... I do need to make sure that I do uh, sort of live up to that um, in the next few weeks. But it's not easy. It really isn't. I thought that uh, it's a case of just turning something on, getting a little bit of tech in, and off you go. But actually, it wasn't quite like that at all. But there you go. Just in, I'm just going to put this first wash in. And that's pretty much it. So I do want to let this dry up now. Um, so I will come back to you as and when this is dry and we go on with a second go. Okay, I've just dried this off with a hairdryer and we're going to go back in with a second go at this now. And for that I'm using a lot more um, indigo. Uh, it's one of my favourite blues, I've got to say. But I'm going to put in some um, Indian red to that. So I give this very, very dirty purple, and I've got plenty of it mixed up, and I just want to come in and suggest these buildings in the background here. I'm not going to go in too much detail with them. I just want to suggest that they're there and sort of coming all the way through. And I'm going to change that color to a bit more of the Indian red on this part of this building here. It just gets a little warmer, I noticed, on this one here. So I'm going to come in with there another chimney and just suggest that and let that come down the side of this one and as it comes down it does turn a little bit lighter so for that I'm going to mix it straight with some um, raw sienna so we've got three colors going on in there at the moment and I'm going to leave that it doesn't need to be any more than that there's actually another building here which I'm going to suggest a little bit further away maybe just suggesting the shape and the roof going in there like so if you want you can add a little bit of warmth to that one I think there is some in the painting I think they're like pink or sort of warm rendered walls like so but then I want to come in with some Indian yellow with my favorite um, blue my indigo and I'm going to suggest some of the dark values well, not the dark values yet, but the initial values of these darker bushes, sort of catching the sun. So I'm going to come in with a little bit more lemon as it's catching the sun. And I'm going to leave these dark ones up around the back, but I'm just going to put those in through there, bring all this all the way down to the suggested edge of this little boat. And it's going to get a lot darker in there, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to bring it down so it's a similar value working through like that and bring it down down past this section here so we've got that is a little piece of dirt coming into the mud and another piece on this so we've really just laid in the ground for this part of the grass and i'm going to bring some more in here just very quickly suggesting the edge of this and i want to put some light colors into there too 
as well. But this time I'm going to add a little bit of the orange because it's quite burnt and dead through here, but it's going to be stronger too. I'm going to leave that to settle down and do what it wants to do. Meanwhile, I'm going to come back in, take that out because I don't want that colour on the background. I'm going to come back in with a bit more indigo again, a bit more of the lemon, and make my nice green up. Make it quite weak and quite light because I want to come in over here and bring in some of the areas that are cooler around this building here. I'm leaving the building out, negative space, while I do this and just bring it all the way through. I'm going to bring in some a little bit of Indian yellow just to one or two areas here that suggest it's catching some sun. And then come back in with some more of this over the top and one or two shapes. Now we're going to we're going to I'm going to definitely change some of these marks, but this is just really to get myself going with it. There is a nice bit of light coming through there, which probably the garden or something to do with the building. And then we come into the tops of our reeds, and for that I am going to come in with some more. Um, raw sienna into the tops of these, letting it flow. I'm not too worried about that. Just going to let it flow, let it do what it wants to do, but I want to give it some colour and just leave that to settle down now. Take that through. There we are. That's fine. This will be done very, very soon, but not quite yet. Anyway, where was I? I can't remember what I was talking about now. I think I was talking about what I want to do because of the isolation that the coronavirus or COVID-19 has meant to each and every one of us around the world. And I think I wanted to touch on the fact that as artists, we've got so much scope for us to, to create. Even before such things as this threatened our lives or threatened our way of living, then um, we had the, the benefit that we could do so much more in at different times you know we have the ability to create and as such um, we have no excuses that if painting is our love if creating art or making art is our love then this is whilst in isolation is the most perfect time to create more of it and if possible where possible share that experience with others now as an art tutor over many many years uh, very few years i've got to say on youtube or patreon it's pretty much the last sort of six months of my life with regards to that although i have been teaching for 20 odd years and i have been lecturing for as many if not a few more um but in terms of sort of reaching out and having regular people attend my classes, then it's been uh, since 2011 that I've done that. And um, yeah, my experience is that these people, albeit are um, isolated right now, still have the need to create. I know my physical students have sort of been on to me, uh, asking me what I can do to help them. Uh, and enjoy more from their painting whilst they are cooped up inside as it were. So to that end I have been I have decided that I'm not going to sit idly by. I will uh, like many other artists uh, increase on my endeavors when it comes to um, creating videos for you. But I also want to uh, create this live stream effect. And I have also increased the level within my Patreon channel whereby I can actually or uh, sort of have contact with people more easily um, on a fairly regular basis and help them with their painting. And I find that is going to be beneficial to me. It's not me going stir crazy. But I hope it's going to help many others too out there. That's the aim of it. And I'm sure that that will be the case. I'll put one or two marks of light coming through here. Off of this. Bit of warmth into the mud. Like so. 
and let that just bleed down in one or two places, just soften some of these edges. Yeah, I'm rambling a bit, I do know, and I keep going off topic, I know that too. But I just wanted to sort of talk about really what I am about when it comes to um, Paul Apps Fine Art, as it were, and creating uh, videos that are useful to people and, um, you know, make people want to get out there and create more art for themselves and occupy their time. And if it comes to it, sort of take that on with other friends um, and family and just enjoy themselves, but above all, keep up with their painting. Have some of my students today wonder what they could do, what they could paint. And I just said that very, very simply is just to take a small window in your home and set up a still life for yourself. And from that still life, just leave it there, leave it um, up, leave it set up and just keep going back to it. When you're between jobs at home, you know, when you're sort of, be careful here, uh, when you're sort of done the washing up or had your breakfast, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what jobs you've got to do, we've all got to do them. But when you've done that is then just to come back and return to the still life that you've done and do another drawing of it. It, it matters not how many times you do it. Um, you know, the more times you do it, the more familiar you become with the subject itself. And to that end, drawing it a dozen times, might some might say is not enough, but more than once. And I think that you'll be happy or pleased with the fact that you did that. And um, yes, yeah, so that's what I told them to do. And that's what I think some of them have gone off and done. And they've just set up this little still life and um, had a little play at home. And uh, I think each and every one are enjoying it. But it, it, I think it's important to do these things and to uh, learn from what you are doing. Just coming down here with a bit more information on this building. Might put a little tap of um, cobalt into that actually. A little bit cooler than I've allowed it to be. So I'm going to tap in a little bit more cobalt into that colour. Let that bleed through. And then when that rests up that will be a cooler version of what I started with. And I want to keep it away from that. I'm not sure. I, I'm sure that's going to be wet. And I'm sure I'm going to regret this. Aha, he says, might get away with it. I think it's caught it there. Not a worry, I'm not too worried about it. I just wanted to, um, just having fun, really. There we go. Now I'm a little bit out of touch with these chit chats. I should have done a few more before, but uh, never mind. I put in one or two dark areas in here. I've got to be careful that I don't um, mess anything up just want to suggest some darks around some of these shrubs and bushes. Still maintaining catching the light as they go through. One or two taps here. And there are one or two trees over here. I'm just going to scratch those in. Very dry brush for those. Like so. And I think there's one over here like that. And I think it actually comes to the side of the building. So let's just put that in a little stronger. Not too much, just enough. There you go. And use some of the same color variants, some of the darker green, a little bit more. And the violet actually works quite well. Let's just come in with some of these darks here. Now, this is very wet, so I really can't touch that. So I'm going to come in as close to it as I dare and just bring that up. It does thin out there anyway, so I can get away with doing something like this at that point. Just run that in there. It's going to bleed that roof out. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to bleed the roof out and down, but I'm not too worried. There we go. I've lost my thread again. I keep doing this. I get so into the painting that I actually forget to talk about things. 
Um, and if I do start talking about something, I stop, talk about the painting again, then all of a sudden I've got to work out what the hell I said before. So I suppose it's a case that I can't probably multitask, as some people would tell me. Can't multitask, can't keep up two conversations at once. But uh, even though that is maybe the case, I am trying. I'm mixing up some indigo now with some raw sienna to give me a really dirty dark green in places, just to emphasize some of the shadows in here. On the, I don't know what sort of trees they are, but they're a little bit darker, and a little bit cooler. And I'll leave that there and then come back in adding a little bit of both the Oriolin and the Indian yellow in here to give me this nice, darker area coming through there and almost scratching it through to form the um, other shrubs and stuff that are in the foreground and it's just dry brush it's just scribbly scratchy stuff because i don't want too much detail and i want this sort of top of these bushes to broken so that you get the idea that there's uh, so much more happening here than some of these little areas of reeds I can do something like this and just pop them into negative space in a sense and just suggest that some of that green is or some of the reeds are breaking into the green I suppose is what I'm trying to do you get the idea hopefully it just breaks it up nicely I just want to leave that edge a little softer than I have it but be careful you don't overdo this part because it will bleed where the water is going to allow that to flow now. I didn't want it totally hard. Oh, that's all right. I'm quite happy with that. I like the way that's blooming into that other green. Actually, it's quite nice. What I'm tempted to do is just add a little bit of lemon to that and just tap in a little bit of color this way, which will bleed back into that green as well. Let it attack it from both ways lighten that through there and then go back in with some of this real dark in here and where that's bled i'm going to leave that to dry and come back in with our, a much darker mix pigment in a moment and any of that brown of the roof that's obviously traveled into the green will disappear quite like what's happening here just going to leave that to settle down now for let's come back into these reeds and over this side now this side too has got a lot of darkness, and especially around here. So there's a lot of dark shadowing, and I want to put a bit of warmth to that. So I'm going to come in with some of the green and a little bit of red into there, and try and suggest that mud is up to the bow. Paint around that space of the boat itself and up. Try and maintain the shape, soften it, and across. There we go, let that settle down. That will be the uh, darkness of that set of bushes or reeds or whatever that might be, I can't tell from here. And then the slopey back of the boat coming down and all in shadow as it touches the front edge of this reed bed right here and the back of the boat. So let's just do that like so and continue that dark all the way out through there. So we isolate that reed bed really, and just let that come down into there like that. I think that works a little bit there. Now I think I missed off a little bit of greenness, should I say, a green bank here on the side. I'm gonna just put that in like so. Get away with that because the reed bed is almost dry. And it will, if I want to sort of do this again, I can suggest that the top of the reeds are poking through the grasses of the building and the back lawn, as it were, if that's what it is. I have no idea. I'm just making that bit up, whatever it is. I'm bringing that through there like so. And a nice bit of light green, catching the light and the sun through there, which is quite interesting. This has got to dry up a little bit more than I can do this part in at the back of the building. And I'm going to leave the boat to the last minute and I'm just going to come back in here with some of these areas of the shadowy side of these bits of the grass and on this one too. Anyway, yeah, sorry, digress. 
if I'm repeating myself, you're going to have to forgive me, people, because I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm not scripting any of this. I'm just talking. So if what I say makes no sense at all, other than the painting bit, then please forgive me. Um, because I didn't want to make a full-length video just giving art instruction. I wanted to talk about all the things that are happening at the moment. And um, it's all very, very important to each and every one of us that we do, as we're told, by our governments, respective governments. And at the same time, at the end of it, come out of this um, as um, healthy and as little um, affected by all of it as possible. Now I know for some of us probably that's not going to remain so we're all being affected one way or another but I just love the idea that you know maybe there's just this small chance that you know at the end of all this that the human race may just sort of be pulled together a little bit more you know and um, so many things happen in the world that um, we should learn from some of this stuff and maybe we can begin to be less intolerant of each other and be a little bit helpful and loving to our neighbours as well. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not a hugely religious person. In fact, many of you know probably say I'm not religious at all and I don't mean that as a right or a wrong thing. We each believe and whatever, but whatever your belief is that, you know, that I can't see why we have to be so awful to our neighbours um, and to other people around us or intolerant, you know. Um, I suppose everyone's got a right to protect and, and what have you, but I think that some excuses, we people jump to that as an excuse all too quickly. And uh, I just feel that we really need to be, anyway, sorry, I don't want to, that's a whole new subject, but what I'm trying to say is, wouldn't it be lovely if at the end of all this, that all the lessons we've learned as nations around the world, that we can start being a little bit um, more tolerant of each other, help each other out, even country to country, not just town to town or county to county or area to area, but actually country to country. Wouldn't that be fantastic that, you know, we've all had our losses and our countries have done their utmost to protect their citizens. Wouldn't it be fantastic if indeed the result is that the whole world starts talking to each other in a very different and more beautiful and friendly way and put aside their petty differences over territory, greed, money, and all these different things. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you get something like this happened again, then it doesn't matter how rich you are. It matters not if you've got one pound in the bank or a million pounds in the bank. It doesn't um, protect you from dying on something of this nature. So, you know, I think that when it comes to that, we all want to survive, but when it comes to um, talking to each other and putting aside some of those differences, it would be a wonderful thing. I don't know, probably I'm just talking a load of tosh. But I just would love to see something like that happen and for the human race to suddenly finally learn that there's just more to life than absolute greed and dominance over other people. Um, it's a case of let's learn from this, let's move on and let's understand and let's just start liking each other. I, know, I sound like I'm on a soapbox now. <laughs> I do apologize. hope I'm not offending anybody. It's not my intent. I just want to chit chat to you guys while I am painting this picture. But what does I say? I'm going to pop back to what I was talking about with Patreon because I do have a Patreon page, as some of you will know, and I'm adding content to that all the time. 
I enjoy it. I enjoy the process of filming and I will continue to do that all the time I am able. And I will do live streaming again as soon as I am able to do that. I love that process. And although I am merely a beginner and just starting all of this in my sort of career as as content creator, for want a bit of a term, but I just feel that, you know, we've got so much to offer as artists and not just artists, photographers, filmmakers, writers, we all enjoy our craft uh, into varying degrees of success or abilities, but invariably if there's somebody out there who's starting up, they can, they can find so much help in your wisdom and your words and your knowledge. And it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. Now, people are always coming up from below you and really want to know. One of my other uh, fancies, that I, hobby, is, is that of model railways. And um, I've only been doing it for about two years. I've probably started at the in late 17, did it all through 18 and 19 and continue on today. And as such, I um, didn't know anything. My first track was just a few lines going around a six foot by four foot table. And I was asking questions of people, joined all the forums and all the uh, Facebook channels that were out there that would help that I could find to do what I wanted to do. And um, I learned. And then I started filming it, not because I wanted to start doing loads of stuff on YouTube with regards to it, but I wanted to record my own journey when it comes to making my model railway. So I started recording what I did. And people started seeing one or two, well, friends did, and they suggest I put it out on YouTube. I felt, at the time, I felt that was a little bit... Um, I don't know, sort of a bit of an ego trip for me. I don't know anything about it. Why would I do that? Anyway, I did. And all of a sudden I realized that there are people out there that were just starting and were further back on it than I was. And they started really enjoying what I put out. And I sort of made several remarks about it over the course of time of how I have learned from others and others learn from me. And I think that's the case. And I think with this painting or photography or anything, we learn so much from other people. And it doesn't matter what state of your career you're at, that you can actually help others by giving information that you think may be a little bit not needed or a bit trivial, but others will sort of really be grateful to hear that from you. Anyway, that's just a thought. I'm coming to the end of this now, and probably some of you are thinking, good, move on. But I've enjoyed it. And what I wanted to sort of just finish up saying more than anything else is that, um, I will be doing so much more on YouTube over the coming weeks, months, and uh, years, I hope. And um, so if you enjoy the work that I do, then by all means, uh, get involved with my channel, like it and subscribe it, all those things that I keep asking people to do each time I put a video out, that's great. And I appreciate all of that from you. But at the same time, you know, if you want to learn more, get involved with the Patreon. That costs you nothing to look at. But if you get involved, it's just a few dollars a month if you want to get involved with it. You don't have to stay with it forever. You can just do it for a little while and um, leave it. Come back to it later if you want to. Whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is people are getting something from what I do. And I that much is great for me. Just putting a bit of detail in through here now. Up to the boat. Right, so, a bit of detail onto there, on the cabin. So yeah, um, take a look at it. 
And if you want some real-time help from me, then as I say, I am planning not just more of these videos here, but also some um, some um, more comprehensive uh, streams later on, if I ever learn the tech. <laughs> and assuming I do, then there'll be a lot more from me as an artist and a tutor along the road. And something also with the Patreon is that I've got some real-time help for you. I'm actually the tier, in, one of the tiers includes uh, me making contact with you at least twice a month and um, helping you out one-to-one -one on a video link so that you can um, have a piece of work in progress and we can discuss it. I can help you with that and um, yeah, so you, you sort of get to understand so much more about the work and I can help you. Um, not for everyone, but um, it, it's working and there's a couple doing it and uh, I think they're enjoying it and I want more people, I'd like more people to take advantage of that because it's there and I just hope that you know people can make use of that. Just going to put in a few darks here going across and I want to do something into this area here so I'm just going to come in and scratch very dry brush, very loosely, scratch in one or two areas that could be um, grasses. A bit more blue, a bit more cooler colours down in here. And I want to come back in. I actually did have some raw sienna on the green, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to use a little bit of quinacridone gold, I can never say it properly. And just come in here with some of these lighter colours, a bit of the orange and gold as well, that would help. That's it, just to warm up some of these colours through here. Now I'm being deliberately brutal with this brush. But I just wanted to suggest some grasses. Like so. And then come back in with a few of the darks in here. Just popping them through, banging them up. Even take the brush further up the shaft and just flick it like this. I'm going to make some cooler. I'm going to come in with some cobalt green. And that just brings a whole raft of different cools and warm greens to the whole equation through here. Just breaking up some of these shapes, not making them obviously too big a brush shapes. I don't think I said at the beginning what paper I used. If I did, I apologize. Um, but it is 300 pounds and it is uh, hot pressed paper, so smooth paper. Sometimes I enjoy painting on this paper because it just is a very different animal to rough paper or not paper. It's got a characteristic of its own and will put up with an awful lot of punishment in terms of working over the surface. I have heard of one artist in America who uses it pretty much, I think, exclusively of actually using sandpaper. I've never actually been brave enough to take a lump of sandpaper, however fine, to my painting and uh, roughing it up. But if it works, it works. I'm not saying it doesn't or it does, but I'm, I'm not personally um, going to do that. Right, I think this is pretty much done for what I wanted. I just want to come in here with this extra dark value on here, just run it into the edge and down along that roof into this part of the tree and down the side of the building like so and then just run that through in this fashion so it suggests that there is another level of dark in that tree through here and here and just run that into there and 
think that works. Doesn't need to do any more. I've got to put in a little bit through on a couple of these that uh, could do with just a bit more definition. Through there. And on here. And on this tree here, just lost a little bit when it dries. So I'm just going to put a little bit back in. Like so. And this one through here. And going to take the rigger. Last job, I think, pretty much. I'll take my rigger, one of them, whichever one comes to hand. Put a bit of uh, Indian red to my greens just to make a dirty, dark, woody color. And just suggest there is a pole here, which I just want to put that in. And it's quite a bit higher than that one. Okay, that goes in there. And then I want to put in some suggested trunk or branches to this tree. Not too much, just suggestive one or two little bits like so. And again on this one let's just put one or two areas in that give that a little bit more form as a tree. Okay, don't want to see too much, just the odd suggestion. And I think that'll be it. This is going to have a line down through there. I'm just going to try and do that. And then one there like so. We're pretty much done. All right, so my, my ramble was a bit messy. I do apologize. I hope you've enjoyed this though. One thing I just realized I haven't done is I haven't given my building any windows. So let's just address that right now. Let's put some windows in there and a doorway somewhere there and another window and another window and another window. And then there is a drain pipe or something coming down there. And I think there's something coming down through there. I'm going to put that in. Straight would have been good. There you go. Ha. All right, people. Enough. I've done enough. And I've enjoyed painting this. I'm sorry if my chat was a little bit disjointed at times. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to say about COVID-19. I think I wanted to say to everybody that I, um, I wanted to come out and do more as a tutor, more as a, an artist to share that knowledge with other people who are stuck at home. Some of you may well have been decided to take up painting for the first time. And if that's the case, then I wanna be able to reach out to as many people as I can via these videos and also via streaming uh, in the future. But I think the other message I just wanted to say to everybody around the world, for those I know and for those I do not know, um, and may never ever meet, uh, just stay healthy, uh, be safe, um, follow the guidelines, especially all this distancing from each other. And um, yeah, just hopefully that on the flip side of all this, we'll all still be painting, still be talking to each other, watching videos and enjoying life as a whole. So with all that said and done, um, Put a like to this, add any comments you like, I'll answer each and every one of them, that'll be fantastic. And if you're not subscribing to my channel and like the work that I do overall, then please subscribe to it. It'd be fantastic to have you on board. It costs you nothing to do that, and at least if you click the bell icon, you'll know each time I put a new video up. And right now, I hope that they're going to be a little bit more frequent than one a week. Um, and above all else, if you want to get involved with Patreon, take a look at the Patreon page. The details are all underneath this in the description. And it will show you what I'm doing, especially the new tier whereby there are links uh, with video with you for one-to-one -one, uh, teaching, help, and advice uh, moving forward. So take a look at that. And again, you'll be most welcome if you want to get involved. But um, until the next video, guys, stay happy, stay active. Above all, keep the pencils and the brushes moving. Paint like heck. Learn, practice, and enjoy. And I'll catch each and every one of you very, very soon. All the best for now.
Bye-bye.